Hi, my name is Rodrigo Escobar, and today I want to talk about Speedy Protocol. There is no doubt that the internet revolutionized the world. It is now something critical that we use every day. It is more than a luxury. The exponential evolution of the internet brings into a level of usage that it was not designed for. At the beginning, it was a tool to facilitate communications and store information, as well as being able to share it around the world. It then evolved to begin use for education, health, defense, commerce, travel, and entertainment purposes. Technology in general is also increasing parallel to the internet at higher definitions. Thinner and smaller devices with the same or higher capacities at lower cost not only made these features more accessible to the end users, which generates the phenomenon of the internet of things, which in counting the daily common appliances like thermostats, refrigerators, lights, and so on, to connect to the internet thanks to the embedded systems and facilitate the control, efficiency, and autonomy of their usage. This technology slash internet boom to facilitate our lives also come with its own challenges. Files and data are heavier and more complex, requiring a more powerful, strong, and faster network. Also, more and more devices have been added to the internet to the point that there is not enough IPs to identify them, reason why the new IPv6 was created in 1998. IPv6 uses 128-bit addresses, allowing 2 to the 128 3.4 times 10 to the 38 addresses, or more than 7.9 times 10 to the 28 times as many as IPv4, but the IP is not the only one that changes. New protocols are needed in order to handle the growth data. Nowadays, websites and pretty much everything is getting bigger, heavier, and more complex. Just a picture taken with today's cell phone camera is so big that it could not be saved on a computer hard drive from 30 years ago. As we learn in our class, HTTP and CTP are the most common protocols of the web, where TCP is a generic reliable transport protocol that guarantees delivery of the data, and HTTP is the application level protocol that provides a basic request response semantics. One of the problems with those protocols nowadays, especially with HTTP, is the latency because when HTTP was designed a few years ago, the websites weren't as robust as they are right now, and some of the most common features that HTTP has a lack of performance are single request per connection. Because HTTP can only fetch one resource at a time, HTTP pipeline helps, but it still enforces only a 5 queue. A server delay of 500 milliseconds prevents to reuse the TCP channel for additional requests. Browsers work around this problem by using multiple connections. Since 2008, most browsers have finally moved from two connections per domain to six. Client initiate request. In HTTP, only the client can initiate a request. Even if the server knows the client needs a resource, it has no mechanisms to inform the client and must instead wait to receive a request for their resource from the client. Request headers today vary in size from 200 bytes to over 2 kilobytes. As applications use more cookies and user agents expand features, typical header sizes of 700-800 bytes is common for modems or ADSL connections in which the uplink bandwidth is fairly low. This latency can be significant. Reducing the data in headers could directly improve the serialization latency to send requests. Redundant headers, in addition, several headers are repeatedly sent across requests on the same channel. However, headers such as the user agent, host, and accept are generically static and do not need to be resent. Optional data compression, HTTP use optional data compression encodings for data content should always be sent in a compressed format. In order to make the HTTP faster, 
some protocol proposals have been made and implemented. But one that caught my attention is SPDY, pronounced SPDY, and is currently in development by Google. SPDY is an application layer protocol for the web which greatly reduces latency with some specific goals. Reduce page load time in at least 50%. To use TCP as the underlying transport layer to be compatible with the existing networking infrastructure. Only require changes at the client user agent and web server applications and not content change by website authors. Increase maintain security using SSL as the transport protocol and enable the server to initiate communication with the client. In order to accomplish this, SPD has a session layer atop of the SSL that allows for multiple concurrent interleave streams over a single TCP connection. The usual HTTP GET and POST message formats remain the same. However, SPD specifies a new framing format with the speedy, streams are bidirectional. In example, can be initiated by the client and server. Multiplexed streams allow unlimited concurrent streams over a single TCP connection, sending less but more dense packets. Speedy also allows to prioritize requests preventing the network channel to be congested with resources that are not critical and also header compression which results in fewer packets and a fewer bytes trans In addition, SPD provides the option for server-initiated streams that can be used to deliver content to the client without the client's need to ask for it. Providing two options for this task. Server push, which the X associated content header enhancing the experience of the user, and server hint, the server uses the X sub-resources headers to suggest the client to request a specific resources. These also have proved to avoid pushing content regardless of the existing cache, which results in less bandwidth usage. Early prototypes have been tested and the benchmark results of a speedy against HTTP have some interesting results. 1% packet loss, Average package load time reduction of 27% to 60% over plain TCP and 39% to 55% over SSL. A reduction of 35 to 1142 milliseconds in page load time simply due to header compression. Speedy sent about 40% fewer packets than HTTP and uses, uses fewer TCP connections also. As today, a speed implementation in Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, Opera, Amazon Silk, Internet Explorer, and Safari. It's still in development, and some areas need to be improved, such as SSL tunneling, encryption, handshake, and caching from some proxy servers. But some tests and the benchmark results prove that this protocol is heading in the right direction and its specific goals can be accomplished in order to improve the page load latency and increase security without compatibility issues of the existing network infrastructure. This is something that is definitely needed in order to maintain the capability of handling the growing data of today and tomorrow's technologies. If you found this presentation interesting, and please don't forget to place any comment or questions on Blackboard. Thank you.